all the people who aren't watching. All right, great. <clears throat> so thank you, everybody, for coming to another game. Uh, Bob, you want to run us through a quick recap of last session? Yeah. Or last three would be great. OK. Uh, <laughs> you, did you miss the last three, Kyle? I thought it's been a while. I think, OK. I, no, I think you only missed, I think you only I think missed, you only missed the one. Because you were there for the mushrooms. You were there for the potion, because that's how Grace turned into, or Eris yeah. turned into a dwarf. We didn't, you guys and then we literally, we didn't, we didn't yeah, yeah, we didn't do that game. OK, OK. So, um, so yes, so you really only missed the one. And what you oh. missed was, um, uh, okay, hold on. Sarath went to talk to the. Is it she a half orc or an orc? Half orc. Half orc. Did he uh, miss so... the one before that though? He no. The no. one before that was when you turned into a, a dwarf. Oh yeah. When he was there yeah, for we that. Haven't... Yeah, because we, we, we missed one game because of me. Then we missed another game because of everybody else. And right. Then... Yeah. And yeah. then this is the last game, yeah. and then okay. today. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you you only missed one game, Kyle. And what oh. you missed was Sarath went to talk to a half orc priest kind of uh tried to like oh could you help me for a friend who's possessed and everyone saw through that but they like carried it way longer than they needed to um and then um didn't get any helpful information except possibly trading up to an even scarier thing that could push out the currently possessing scary thing so that's an option Again. um like maybe he'll make a deal with whatever the thing that was in the shadows was um and then I'm giving options to you guys, and you keep rejecting my offer. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Calixtus keeps saying, "Hey, I got some ball for you," and they're like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! That's five silver down by the docks." Um, what are you talking about? I keep moving that wheel closer to the gang joins a death cult. <laughs> but, um, but Kyle, the, the shorthand of what you missed is um, that happened. Um, did we do anything else in town? Oh, uh, Eris got some shoes, cut the soles off of them, so it looks like she's wearing shoes, but she doesn't like having little toe finger things. So she's still walking around barefoot, um, but hates looking at them, so the tops of the shoes are there. She wears shoes, so she doesn't want to have soles on the bottom of them. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't want to look at the, you know, foot fingers, so she has the top of the shoes. So just the top of the boot covering the toes. So like a Party City Superman costume. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 like a Party City Superman costume Great. of a dwarf. <laughs> um, oh my god. Okay. Um, also, and then if you don't we have went... inspiration, get inspiration. Yeah! <laughs> I actually do already have inspiration. Can I give it to Kyle? Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, let's see if I have inspiration. We'll, we'll, we'll pass the chain of inspiration along. There you go. Okay, it. All right. Uh, we left the city. We went to a bridge. The bridge was... We used the lantern to go through the darkness. It seemed to be working pretty well. When it's up, it's, like, very bright. It's the gloaming level brightness, especially within 60 feet. It actually triggers Sarath's dark uh, sunlight sensitivity. Um, got to this bridge. There was... Was it an ogre? Goblins I think it was an ogre. ogre. Yeah, it was an ogre. Yeah, so there were goblins. there were four go four goblins, a hobgoblin, and an ogre guarding the bridge. And they're like, stop! You can't cross because this is the Iron Crown's uh, bridge. And we're like, yeah, we're gonna cross. Sarath's like, yeah, this is a bridge inspector bot. You're gonna have to let him do his job. Um, and they didn't buy that. And then we got into a fight, and uh, the party took out everything else. And Sarath spent like four turns setting up. <laughs> The ultimate oh, no. fucking murder Austin, combo. Austin told me about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My omni move. Omni you guys have this in great detail. Like some serious I'm charging up. Yeah. <laughs> some serious Little sparks in his hair. Dragon Ball Z action. Yeah. Three three rounds later, he four rounds later, he goes over and he murders the obliterates the fuck. Probably did like thirty damage to a ten HP monster. <laughs> um, I think he had and... thirteen. But yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> There you go. 30 damage it to a 13 HP monster. Felt great. <laughs> um, and then we claimed the bridge, and we continued on toward uh, Fort Vigilance. And then we got surrounded by 20... Um, goblin riders? 20 plus goblin wolf riders. And we were like, yeah, we'll just... We're going where you're leading us, so just take us there. Um, and they took us to this place where... Oh, I've got the name of her somewhere. I keep wanting to call her Marta. Is it Marta? Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, they led us to Camp uh, Fort Vigilance, where there are goblinoids and humanoids working together. And we learned over the course of this, like going through this 
fort it, that they're all under a bugbear named Hesta. Heska. And he- Heska. Oh, excuse me. Heska. And Heska is super cunning, very smart, much smarter than your average uh, hobgoblin uh, or bugbear. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Um, and, uh, yeah, sorry, I got a picnic basket stuck in my head now. Um, and yeah, so Heska wears an iron crown, is in charge of Fort Vigilance, uh, has a castellan named Marta who had a, you know, a castle who's a dwarf. Yes. And seems very tense about the whole working relationship. Heska already seems to be starting to formulate plans for how they're going to use us. Um, or there's some other clock that's like Heska plotting. Um, so that's great. And he asked very early on, so does Blackburn have an army? And we said, yeah, of course, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be out here. Um, which it doesn't. (laughs) Oh yeah. It's a total load of shit, but he doesn't know that yet. Um, and then what else is there? Yeah, that's, that's, that's most of it. We ended with a siren going off. And a look of concern passing over several of the people's faces in the room because apparently the sirens mean something. Apparently there's some sort of kobold problem. Trouble with kobolds, yeah. Trouble with kobolds. Which by extension is trouble with dragons, but that's a conversation for another day. We don't need to worry about it. Don't think about it. All right. Thank you, Bob. Get inspiration if you don't already have it. I don't this time. Hey. All right, so... We've got some new clock stuff going on. Bob mm-hmm. kind of mentioned Heska's plotting over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, that started the hunt clock filled up. Uh, yes, never trust a librarian is the new yep. catchphrase. <laughs> uh, gang joins the death cult hasn't cl- clicked up in a couple games. Guys, you got to get those no. numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. No. Uh, we can leave them exactly where they're at, though, too. I just want the game after that fills all the way up for clicks to be like, here, everyone. He's like just handing out. What is this? Oh, it's it's your honorary insignia. Everyone <laughs> has to wear one. Like a little ball murder knife thing. And Bob has almost finished his lodestone spell. Getting there, yeah. Dagger. I mean, your yeah. dagger. Here, here is your perfectly regular dagger to murder people with. <laughs> I said what I said. All right. Uh, cool. Does anybody have any questions before we start? Uh, I'm okay. Nope. All right. Cool. So yeah, like Bob said, when we last left off, you guys uh, were being interviewed by Heska, the Iron King, and Marta Blackstone, who is the Castellan, at least she was, of Fort Vigilance. And uh, we left off with horns being sounded and as Bob said a lot of very concerned looks being passed around yeah we we were like in the throne room yeah I think as soon as those horns go uh, Sarath's gonna pull out both of his swords (laughs) just to be ready (laughs) alright you pull out your swords and a bunch of goblins all pull out their swords and they're they're all staring right at you (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna go, what the hell did you pull out your swords for what it was like the hell did you pull your sword out for no what did you pull your sword out for hey Damn i'm it. asking I'm the question i'm doing new york all yeah. day yeah. <laughs> australian uh no 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 you pulled yours out first for sure <laughs> marta marta is like could everybody please put their weapons away <laughs> What the hell was that? Uh, what what the fuck is going on? He's talking about the alarms in case there was any confusion. Let's let uh, our the leaders of this castle let us know. Uh, Marta says, uh, "Well, the horns signify that scouts are approaching, uh, and they've shown signs that they have um, bad news." So that is the yellow alert. Means everybody to bad, battle bad stations. News. Okay. You know, bad news is unspecified. Bad news is unspecified. We'll learn more when the scouts get here. Gotcha. Uh, which doesn't take long. The the, the scout like scout. literally it's a it's a goblin on a wolf who just rides right into the throne room. Mm. 
uh, he he jumps off his wolf, which is like three quarters. It's got you can see it's got a couple of arrows sticking out of it, and it's like already almost dead. And the the goblin jumps off and in a angry flourish, like takes out a scimitar and finishes the job. And everybody's like, all the humanoids are like, whoa! And all the goblins are like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the goblin uh, approaches Heska and falls to one knee and starts like, greetings, Iron King, Heska, greatest of goblins. And Heska kind of like, he keeps kind of going on in this vein and Heska kind of like is nodding along to it. Like kind of like you can see, he's kind of enjoying it a little bit, and then he gets bored and he kicks the goblin in the head, and says, "Report, slave." And the goblin gets up, spits out a tooth, and uh, says, "Oh, great Heska, the uh, we we are under attack. We soon we're going to be under attack. The 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 kobold forces are marching from the east. They'll be here in two days." Maybe. Probably. Probably two days. And Marta bites off a, a dwarven curse of some sort. And uh, all the blackheads immediately start, like, dispersing. Like, like they've got work to do, and alright, time to, time to get to work. It's clear that there's been, like, a plan in place, because as soon as, like, there's confirmation that the enemy is coming, everybody, like immediately starts talking, pointing, like, it's like a very much like a, all right, it's time, guys. We knew this was coming. Yeah, so the throne room They're quickly... From which direction, did they say? From the east. Away from where we're going. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very important. All right, well, I'm going to sheath my swords and say, right, well, it seems like you guys have your own shit that we stumbled into, so I don't want to be obtrusive. Oh, and uh, Heska turns and looks at you and goes, Oh no, now that the saviors of Fort Vigilance are here, I'm certain that we have nothing to fear. I let's look put a forward. Quick pause. <laughs> quick pause. Just so you know, Kyle, last game, this is important. <laughs> Tara had to make a real big show about how we are the saviors from Blackburn, uh, yeah. which is the throwback that just got it. There we go. Okay. That's important. It's like now, we might have overhyped our position a smidge. Yeah, it's like now that the saviors of Fort Vigilance <laughs> I mean, are here, I'm sure that we have nothing to fear. Uh, that's crazy. I don't know why Jorig here said that about us. <laughs> I, was, I was just, I was just gonna ask, am I there? Or... Oh yeah, well yeah, you're there. Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. I just didn't know if you want to just pop me in later or what. You were sleeping in a bucket on my back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, shit, I have not done the accent, and then I gotta mute myself and yeah. practice for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I just want to watch Kyle be muted and practice I, his accent. The problem is, now I, have, now I have Austin's shitty Australian accent in my head. Just, my just, first thing I practiced, I was like, oh, crikey, I was like, oh, that's not right. <laughs> Remember, focus, you hate the British, you love whiskey, he's... Whew. That's what I need. Let me go to Kyle. Jameson. I'll be right back. All right. He's getting into character. Right. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, that's what we're doing. Oh, is that the plan? Are we oh, actually... Oh, we're just... all just disappearing. We're just... Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. We're taking a shot of whiskey. That's happened. Be back. <laughs> well, how are you guys doing? <laughs> I mean, should I go take a shot of whiskey? What's going on? I mean, it's up to we, you. Got, we got four out of six so far. I guess Casey's got a beer, so that counts. I, I would Marty, do it also, Marty but uh, I can't right now, so... No, you gotta take care of your throat, bro. I drank a cup of coffee today for the first time in three weeks, and it was a mistake, and I am pissed about it. <laughs> Jesus, well, that's not a shot of whiskey, it's it. an entire bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Jesus, it's almost Kyle. Empty, though. That's an Irish Whoa, whoa, comment. whoa. That's like four <laughs> shots of whiskey at a minimum. Into a glass. That's good. Uh, that's, I don't okay. want any more than I that. thought he was going like to start it. pulling from it. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's when the ones start showing up. Cheers. Cheers.
Cheers. Grace will be back in a second. She's got hers already. Mm. Every goddamn time. <laughs> oh, the Grace saviors are here. Let's fucking rock. Let's fucking kill some things then. What do you need to be clubbed or stabbed? Do I hair for you? Well, I'm very glad to hear it. Well, since you're going to be staying with us for a little bit, you're going to need a guide. Tom! And he like, Tom? Tom. He screams Tom. Tom. And, uh... I definitely heard Gollum. Yeah. It's, my mic cuts out, like, the noise threshold thing is like, ooh, he talked loud, don't like that. (laughs) So he yells Tom at the top of his voice, which is quite loud. And, uh, a goblin kind of slinks up, like, just like, he's covered in, like, kind of almost like motley, like, just clothes, like, an outfit, like, stitched up of various different colors. And he's got a, uh, a black, one of the hoods from the blackheads is on his head, except it's, like, two times too big for him. So it mostly just kind of hangs and drops down, and, like, the tail of the hood kind of, like, drops down and drags along the floor. And he's like, what? <laughs> Your job is to show these good people around our fair city. Do you think you can handle that, Tom? Tom says, Yeah. It's like, <laughs> wonderful. Now, everyone, I'm a very busy person, so get the fuck out of my castle. And he turns around and he starts yelling at other people. That seems like a nice guy. Don't worry, Heska, your, your town is safe in our hands. Let's just go. All right, so Tom the Goblin was just sitting there looking really, really, really irritated. <laughs> just like, just imagine this being like being escorted around North Vietnam. <laughs> hey, Tom? <laughs> What's what? there to show in this place? What do you want to see? Well... How about your defenses? Sure. This here is what you call a castle. Griffin chuckles. See <laughs> <laughs> <like> a modem. <laughs> Robot chuckle. Okay, Tom, take us outside. A tour, if you will. Fine. <laughs> Follow Tom. I just realized who he reminds me of, Grace. He reminds me of um, the house elf for the blacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. I forget. Crutcher? Creature. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. So, Tom kind of stomps ahead of you guys. He's got, like, pointy shoes like you like you know like the old school like medieval like pointy shoes that are like too floppy at the toes he's got those but made of metal basically so he (laughs) stomps around like clank 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 uh everybody who sees you with tom there's almost like a like all the goblins who see you there's like a it's like a weird mixture of respect and humor like they're in on a joke that you don't get but nobody says anything when tom's around so mm-hmm. you're not really sure what the deal is with this guy but yeah he leads you out of the fortress <clears throat> and he's like congratulations you've made it outside now what what do you want to see we got that way or we've got that way Tom, you'll yeah, have to forgive me. I've never actually been to a, a fort. Is it vengeance or vigilance now? It's vigilance. Oh, okay. vigilance. Yeah, I, I've never actually been to Fort Vigilance before. Tell me, before the darkness fell, did it look more or less the same? Or have you improved it at all? So, well, we've made some slight modifications, of course. Why? Mostly in the works of. Uh, how should I put this? Uh, revolutionary changes to their agricultural system. The agricultural system? Oh, yeah, you wouldn't believe the shit they were eating here before we came along. Oh, I see. You got them on that uh, strong keto diet then, eh? 
Is that a elf word? I don't. It's an underdark thing. Never mind. Um, no, I. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, Tom? I, I just imagine a bunch of dark elves like talking about like, <laughs> oh, I'm back on my keto, and all the other yeah. dwar- dark elves like, oh, good for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, just, just avocados and meat. They're mm-hmm. just like mm, kebabs. It's so good, man. It's just like a yeah. I really didn't want to, but like uh, Lolf said that I should. So right. <laughs> Well, it's, it's also about a lot of things: torture, slavery, and keto. That's just keto. Yeah. You know. Torture, slavery. Well, I mean, torture, slavery, the... and torture. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's in the yeah. <laughs> it fits in. I wonder if Calixtus is keto. <laughs> he doesn't believe in uh, punishment. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a there's that rumor that keto might lengthen your life. So uh, it's not about that. <laughs> there we go. He's a, he's all about why, that why high cholesterol you, diet. Yeah. Why <laughs> you put yourself through all that, right? You just not. <laughs> Clix just eats a stick of fried butter every morning <laughs> and smokes like a chimney. <laughs> right. He dunks his butter and his whiskey. Yeah, live like there's no tomorrow. Right. Dips, dips the cigar in the butter and whiskey and then right. smokes it. Yours is going to be more about that death cult scene sooner or later if this is a lifestyle. The goal is to always be under a, a mild to moderate level of alcohol poisoning. Right. Okay, all right, so, so Tom's like, yeah. yeah, all right, let's go see the Croche fields. I think Grosh. you guys are really gonna like this. Grosh fields, he said. Yeah, Crosh fields. Oh, y'all never had Crosh before. Well, get ready to live. Come on, follow Tom. And he clanks uh, his way down the street. Lead the way, Tom. Have, have any of us heard of Crosh before? Any of y'all speak goblin? Uh nope. You can I make a might. nature. I do role. not. I checked. I speak gnomish, dwarvish, and common. Bob, you do not know what croche is. Okay. So oh, Bob oh, leads you yeah. south through. Nope. Leads you south through Fort Vigilance. As I said before, like the town is, like the fortress itself is surrounded by a town, which is known as Market. And it's kind of divided into four sections, North, South, East, and West Market. Uh, and as you were coming in, you noticed that South Market was like, instead of having what you'd expect in a town, it looked like somebody had raised the entire area and it was just like a kind of like a swampy field. So that's where Tom leads you. Tom leads you directly to these swampy fields that are filled with people. There's a lot of people working in the fields, both goblins and humanoids. Uh, like up to their knees in muck, uh, but you notice that everybody's also wearing like a, like a like a set of like leather overalls, like mm-hmm. hip like 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 fishing waders almost. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Tom's like, uh, "Welcome to paradise, my friends." Oh, here's a likely specimen, and he reaches down and he he reaches down into the 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 muck, and he pulls out a skull. And out of the skull is growing like the grossest mushroom you've ever seen in your life. Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't upload the picture because I am dumb, dumb. Hold on, I didn't even save the picture. Ugh. Oh man, listen, I'm sure this is a delicacy, but mushrooms are gonna be a tough sell with us. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. No, 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 no. Had That's enough. I don't know. I don't know if Eris is ever gonna eat a mushroom again. <laughs> there are a lot of things I'm never gonna eat again. One of them is anything cooked by D-Roll Bledna. The other is <laughs> shrooms. Hey, listen. So some of us would kill to be a different race than we are. All right. <laughs> and some of us have. You know. And some of us were perfect, exactly how we were. I look afraid of a mushroom. Give me that mushroom. I'll eat it right now. I'll be my guest. <laughs> Hold on. Uh... I th- I think as soon as Sarah says that, he gets a sick and twisted idea. So for about killing before the you mushroom looks like that. Oh. 
That's really hey. cool. Uh, Jorug, you uh, he Tom hands you the mushroom. It's pretty big. It's like he he pulls it out of the skull and kind of tosses the skull back into the mud. I mean, actually, he kicks it. He like tosses it, kicks it, and cackles. Hands you the mushroom. Uh, you take the mushroom, and it smells awful. It just smells awful. I take the mushroom, and I am terrified to eat it. But I can't show fear. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I look... <laughs> Calixus in the eyes and take yeah. a big bite of it. Yeah, I watch you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love that. You take a big old bite of this disgusting mushroom and it tastes even worse than it smells. It is genuinely vile. Uh, it has the consistency of like burnt oatmeal that, that oozes when you bite into it. And kind of tastes like somebody left roadkill out in the sun, like a skunk. It just, it tastes, it, it's just, it is absolutely atrocious. It's the, it's literally the worst thing you've ever had in your body. I'm just watching his face. <laughs> taking notes. I'm also watching his face, taking notes. Oh, no, I'm it. mystified. <clears throat> All right. Well. <laughs> Lovely. That was not as fucking disgusting. What's the matter with you? I thought I thought you said this was paradise, mate. I think he was being facetious. I don't know what that means, but I was pulling no. your leg. This place fucking blows. <laughs> Anyway, Crouch. Smells awful. Great. Tastes worse, but very nutritious, and it'll grow literally anywhere as long as his bodies. <laughs> I, I like. It smells like one of my spells. Oh, you want to want to have a doctor look at your spells, then, mate. <laughs> so let me ask you: You haven't been able to like grow anything that's not a fungus, have you? I, I don't understand the question. I honestly don't really understand how this works either. Um, uh, but apparently, some of the food that people eat up here, where there's normally sunlight, needs sunlight to grow, which just seems stupid to me. Oh. But um, has anything else been growing here? Is this just about it? No, this is it. This is, <laughs> this is fully 90% of the reason that they let us into the fortress. We said we've got I food that. Will Oh, go ahead. If you if you all are eating this stuff, you're not doing it sober, right? So where's the stuff you're drinking so that uh, you can eat this stuff? Show us that. Uh, smart for a dwarf, this one. <laughs> oh, right, Tom's got a little bit of something. Don't you worry. And he reaches in, he pulls out a wine flask for like from out from under his armpit, and he holds it out to you. All right. I'll try anything once. Take a big swig. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is vile. And while you're drinking, he's like, hey, "Guess what? That's made out of." <laughs> Little piss. Oh, no, don't be gross. Yeah, of course it's, it's gross. Obviously gross. <laughs> um. Right, Eris. Come on. You know that the you phrase. See where this was going. <laughs> Eris, you, you got to know that you'll try. The phrase has to be, "You'll try anything twice." I mean, the first time you could, there could be something wrong. With it, you know, like, like I'm sure oh, yeah, Jorg yeah, yeah. here, Jorg here, I'm sure knows that there was probably some like outside force, and actually, Crouch might be great. I'm sure he's going to take a second bite so, right now, right? So clever. Why don't you just take a nice swig of this lovely beverage twice, then, Seraph, since you have this wonderful idea? Oh no, I'm far too afraid. Just it. like Jorg, just like Jorg's way too afraid to take another bite of Crouch. <laughs> You think I'm afraid? <laughs> uh, kinda. <laughs> well, that I'm afraid. I, see, I got the wrong accent again. Uh, <clears throat> afraid? I'm just quite full from the first bite. 
<laughs> yeah, he was practically oh, trembling yeah, with fullness. Oh yeah, just tiny little tummy can't handle anymore. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I should have asked my patron for the spell tongues. I didn't realize that you could speak bitch so fluently. <laughs> I take another bite. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, well, spoiler hey. alert, it doesn't taste any better the second time. Hey, a, much, a much smaller, a much smaller bite. <laughs> you like dance, like, puppets dance. <laughs> yeah, so you like put it in your mouth, and you're like, Arr. and you, that's when you find out that like the crow has like pustules almost. Oh, he got a berry. Uh, Did he get yeah, a gusher? Yeah, like like a little little something like a gusher, you know, and <laughs> it, like, Arr. and it just like <laughs> splurts the vile like fluid, of, a big gusher zit in your mouth, kind of like that. Yeah. You're like, uh. <laughs> oh, don't spit it out. That's very impolite. <laughs> well, this has been very educational. <laughs> now, now, Tom, I do have some questions for you uh, that are not exactly showing me around, if that's all right. All right. Well, I, I can tell that you... Uh, like myself, seem to be from a race that's a lot more, um, to put it uh, simply, uh, burn towns, get money, than we seem to be being right now. Is there a reason that you're being so uh, polite to these citizens? Uh, yeah. But for one, they're providing us with weapons and a place to stay. And two, Heska said so. Fascinating. Um, what is it that you need weapons from, exactly? Uh, the kobolds from Whitecliff. Oh, right, you guys are from around here. So, <clears throat> long story short, there's a, there's a city not too far from here, a couple of days. <laughs> uh, about three days, right. if you hustle. I'll say that. And it used to be filled with people. And now it's filled with kobolds. And they're coming this way. Great. Um, I'm familiar with kobolds, right? Are yeah. there kobolds in the Underdark? Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. And um, I, I hear that there's some of them on their way here now? That's the rumor. Have you had so, uh, with them in the, in the past? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're tough pieces of work. They're nasty customers. And they've got their own city now, apparently. Don't know how they worked that out. Plus, they got that fancy dude on the dragon. And, uh. I'm sorry, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the fancy dude on the dragon. Do tell. Fancy dude. So, Nitor. You know, you guys lived under a rock somewhere, I suppose, where they don't have uh, men on dragons? Uh, I lived under many rocks, friend, um, but I, I like how you're talking about the fancy dude who rides the dragon, like the dragon's just not a big thing. Oh, it's a small dragon, you know. Oh, sure. What the fuck? It's a small dragon. Who cares? Yeah, that's what I just said. The dragon's not the scary part, alright? It's the dude riding the dragon. He's the scary part. And what's his name again? Sir Nitor. Nitor? Nitor? I don't know. People pronounce Sir it different Nitor? ways. Nitor? <laughs> I mean, you could, I, if you want to say that to his face, you're welcome to. We don't know anything else besides his name and that he rides uh, a truck. Everybody can roll a history check. Do be do, do be do. Do 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 Trained. And I roll the one. <laughs> Griffin! I know history. You know history. Ooh. Did I roll too oh. many? Eris, I too. Acquire this nerd I knowledge. rolled too many. Maybe you rolled through Whitecliff at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I got a nat one. I say, uh, ah, the night horse. Is he from uh, the red light district? <laughs> uh, Cheers. So, 
Griffin and Eris, you know, his name is not, not Nidor, it's Nitter, N-I-T-O-R, um, Sir Volmus Nitter. Uh, he's an elven knight uh, who resides in the city of Whitecliff, or at least he did, apparently he still does. Um, so he's the sworn defender of Whitecliff, specifically, not of the duchy, not of the barony. He has sworn an oath to no person. He is specifically the guardian of Whitecliff. And that has been a point of contention uh, in his life multiple times uh, because many people have approached him asking him to make a more, you know, personal pledge. And he has always declined. He's lived in Whitecliff for about 200 years now. Uh, he is a devoted knight. Uh, and he is uh, a devotee of St. Vandria Gilmodrith, who is the elven goddess of war, vigilance, and grief. War, what, and grief? Vigilance. Vigilance and grief. Well, I see why they want the fort now. Um, okay. <clears throat> and what's the name of that goddess? Uh, Vandria Gilmadrith. Hold on. Vandria. I'll put it in the chat. Gilmadrith. Oops, that oh, is not. Did the... I get it? Hold on. That was not what I tried to copy let's at see. all. Let's see how close I am to Vandria Gil. Oh, Gilmadrith. Damn. Not A and O and I and A. Otherwise, good. Spelling cool. doesn't really matter. But anyway. That's fine. So yeah, Elven Knight devoted to the city of Whitecliff. It's sworn guardian. It's lived there for two centuries. Is the devotee of a pretty emo goddess. Uh, Tom. Uh, in your clash with these kobolds, have they ever uh, been teaming up with any uh, dark elves? No. Or Duega? No. It's just kobolds, actually. Great. Have they given Great. any terms? Uh, not to us, but they haven't been to Fort Vigilance yet. But, ah. typically speaking, you know, army of kobolds comes in, you're going to have a bad day. So, people are concerned. Yeah. So... How, how many do we know that they have? You're not in the meetings i get it okay if i was in the meetings would i be here schlepping around with you idiots you're the ones who came here you decided to come here yes uh we came here to save you actually oh well thank god you're here then <laughs> yeah. yeah it was jorg's idea so. odds that have That's right. you. <laughs> well, 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 who you talking about gods abandoning who our gods haven't abandoned us. Our gods are awesome. Look at this. All the crows you can eat. <laughs> and your priests, they have access to their spells, then, yes? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Great. Fascinating. Certain people. I am learning new things every day. Well, that's, you know, what's the point of life if you're not learning something new every day? That's spirit. I mean, you know, burn towns, get money. You know, at first I thought that I was going to hate you, and I do. But you got a certain, uh, je ne sais quoi. I don't even know what that fucking means, but I like it. It's elvish for bullshit. <laughs> it's definitely not. I'm an elf. <laughs> I mean... That's <laughs> <laughs> fair, that's fair. <laughs> So over the course of the, t the day, Tom kind of walks you around the town, uh, pointing out like most of the stuff that he knows. Like, so when you have a tour guide, you know, you get trivia, right? Like, oh, this is the house built by this guy in this year. He was very important. He loved trains and dogs. That's why he built the first dog train in the town. You know, stuff like that. And you're always like, oh, okay, cool. And then you take a picture of your phone, which you look at five years later, and then you're like, I don't. What was that about? What was that why about? Did why, did I, why did I take a picture of a dog on a train? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's Tom's 
Tom's stuff is a little bit more goblin-y. He tells you where all the best murders have taken place the past year. He tells you where uh, the last, got the notes. you know, the the last <laughs> dog that was butchered was found. You know, stuff like that. Like, <laughs> he, uh, it's very, it's just the the, the tone is quite a bit different than uh, your standard tour guide. Um, as before, like, as he walks around, a lot of the goblins eye him with both respect and humor. Uh, and occasionally one of them will yell something at him in goblin, and he'll make a rude gesture back. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, he walks you all around, uh, all around the town. When you guys get to North Market, uh, you hear a voice, a human... He's like, oh, oh, and like a, it's like a, a man in what was once like a nice, like a nice robe. He's like, he's like, like oh, 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 over here, and he's like waving at uh at you guys specifically. He's waving at Calixtus, like oh, he's like, he starts like snapping, like. Okay, I'll walk over. He's like, oh, you must be the strangers I've ever heard about. Wonderful. Yes. Please tell me you have bread. Hmm. I might. Tell me your name. My name is James. What uh, awful path brought you to this awful place? Well, before it was an awful place, I was a merchant in the town. I uh, <laughs> you might have heard of me. I'm somewhat well known in uh, in the barony. No, doesn't matter. Listen, what what does matter is that I have been eating these horrid mushrooms for months now, and I would pay dearly for anything else. Uh, I don't... What? Nothing. You were saying something else. You would pay. For yes. food. Any sort of food. Like, do you have bread or, f or fruit or a vegetable that isn't a mushroom and Tom's like mushroom's not a vegetable idiot <laughs> it's like wait, James, what do you do here uh what, what do I what do I do I I work uh you know I I I am I supply people with things that they need I'm still a merchant but I also work in the croche fields on you know my duty roster and um when 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 time when I, when it's required when when uh, Lord Heska uh, asks it of me of us of the people of the town, uh, for the good of the town. Tom is James here um, obliged to stay in this town with Lord Heska ruling. Tom's like picking his nose. He's like, hmm? oh no, he can go whenever he wants, just as so long as he comes back for for roster duty. Right. And what's the punishment for abandoning roster duty? Death? Did we already see the answer to that on the uh, way in with I'll the people on the pillops? Listen, I'll just say he's going to wind up in the croche fields one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Eris will approach James and hand him a strong flask of booze to this is something that's not nasty as mushroom shit, and it might help you tolerate that stuff better. Help right, yourself. You're what? probably going to get real drunk real fast because I suspect you're not eating much because that's the only food you have around. So, All right, have uh, some fun. So you hand him, like, r real r alcohol, and by real alcohol, I just mean alcohol not made out of mushrooms and he's like he like looks at it he looks at you and he like pops it open and smells it and his eyes get really wide and he pops it and he grabs your hand and he kisses it and he's like hey <laughs> thank you oh my god thank you so much oh blessing blessings up on you bob what's the oh. what's the, the uh, gives a nice price price saint uh what's the what uh, he's like, oh, Tamora, bless you. Tamora, Tamora, bless oh, you. Oh, yeah. Tamora. And yeah. 
And he like he like thinks in a way that would have been charming if she weren't now this <laughs> weird <laughs> mountain dwarf, which now comes as kind of a grimace and like a scary <laughs> 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 thing. So James like I'll, uh... backs backs up and like runs back into his house and closes the door almost before. Uh... <laughs> I'll uh, I'll slip a a ration a single days worth of rations into his other hand he's gone I scared him with my wink <laughs> <laughs> bob you can slip a ration into his hand too yeah if you that's want. fine and he like he actually starts crying and he <laughs> he redoubles his his praise of tamora you know he, he just lavishes you with all the words he can and then ducks into his house which you could tell is actually, I mean, he, James did pretty well for himself at some point in his life because he has a nice house. Doesn't do him a lot of good right now, but you know. Man, Griffin, the effects of that alcohol would have been a lot funnier if you hadn't given given him any other rations. Nah, I'm pretty That's sure tough, I got. He would have I'm pretty sure I got scared off by a hairy knuckles he kissed. Hey. <laughs> Harry Knuckles gonna and get then your Aerith, like leans forward and it headbutts at Sarah, forgetting she no longer has horns. <laughs> you get a face full of beard. Face full of beard. <laughs> right, that might have hit my head if you weren't two feet shorter. Well, I am glad that we have given James a false sense of hope for the day. Let's move on. Um, can I ask kind of away from Tom? Right, so do we have a game plan, or we're just wandering around? Little, Plans. Does, little does Calixtus know that that was spiked with were rat blood. No. <laughs> 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 oh, make it so. Uh, someday, someday, not this one, but someday. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there, guys. He needs a he needs a control case. He can't just go yeah. around introducing I mean, werewolf. Blood. I need to experiment with it enough to have a little bit more like this will work. I you guess I'll be right back. I need to use the restroom up. before somebody else jumps in there. <laughs> that speed. I'll be back too. I'm gonna I'll get some water. Time. I'm gonna check out my food. Okay. Hey. Are you gonna eat the cookie? Do, do, do. What you got there, Kyle? Uh, as far as what, food? Mm hmm. A fake chicken pot pie. All right. What's up? Let's do it. it. Yeah. I already had mine, but I'll choose it. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> I don't drink alcohol very often. <laughs> that's, my, that's my reaction to whiskey too, Austin. You're in good company. Grace made these chocolate chip cookies that are like just the most delicious things ever, and they have little chocolate pockets in it. They have little oh. chocolate pockets in it because they're chocolate chip cookies, Bob. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the Heavenly. pockets are chocolate chips. Are you saying they have little, like, gushers inside of them? 
Yep. <laughs> little little chocolate crushes. <laughs> mm. This is good, Steve. This is real good. Oh, good. The whiskey? <laughs> yeah. Too. The game, yeah. I think, but yeah. Mm. Great job on the job on the whiskey, Steve. It's uh, real smoky and other things that people say to describe whiskey. <laughs> You're whiskeying wrong. Shot? Not right. It's a sipping <laughs> beverage. I also take it in shot form because I can't it, do shots, the effect you. is the desirable element of it for me, whereas Grace actually enjoys the flavor because she's not a heathen like me. Steve agreed with every part of that. Listen, as long as it's not tequila, I'm fine. Oh, tequila is wonderful, too. <laughs> tequila nope. is my kryptonite. Uh, I oh. don't do tequila. Tequila. So I... I have a I have a hypothesis. Oh, oh, tell. what's your? I'm excited to hear this hypothesis. Science. Thank you for not saying the theory yeah. too. Okay, it's it's, it's really the game. Tell me this hypothesis. People either like tequila or whiskey, but never both. Oh, oh. I'm gonna break it. You like? Oh that? yeah, Grace likes I don't both. have any strong feelings about te tequila, but I like it just fine. I think mm. I like tequila. Yeah. I just yeah, we were drinking drink tequila at, at yeah. At, okay, I should say. People yep. have a bad no, reaction no. to one or the other. No. Nope. Like me, it's, I if I drink tequila, I want to. I want to fight people. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say something else. Kyle, <laughs> oh, you want to fight people when you drink whiskey? <laughs> I want to fight people fight. more when I drink tequila. <laughs> 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 maybe, All right. Maybe I just haven't ever had enough tequila in one sitting or enough. We tequila. don't want to play that game. For I mean, science. Not for science. for science, though, Bobby. So you might have to get punched in the face for science. Let's just. I don't we'll think just I'd be a violent drunk. No, we'll well, just shot Kyle of whiskey, is... shot of tequila, <laughs> shot of whiskey, shot of tequila, it's... and whenever oh, we, some. whenever we punch <laughs> someone, whatever the last one that we did was, that's myself. the one that makes you fight. That's bad science, my friend. <laughs> bad bad science. <laughs> Okay. It, it doesn't make me like. Confounds. It doesn't make me violent. Like I want to hurt somebody. I just want to like wrestle. Like yeah, like box. Just or... yeah, he just wants to wrestle. He just wants to you know oil up. Oil yeah. up. Yeah. Like, oil up. Mm -hmm. Put on my speedos. Right. Oh. You speedos? know. That seems like a normal reaction to alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling isn't fighting. It's hugging with passion. And then cut to Heska and Calixtus oiling <laughs> up. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> Hesco would be a hot mess, oiled up. He's covered in fur. that iron iron helmet. Iron mm, helmet. He, mm. oh, the helmet stays on. Helmet That's stays right. On. <laughs> That's for protection, right? Everything else comes off. All right, where the hell oh, were man. we before whatever that was? Who cares? Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. God. This is the story now. No, oh, no. <laughs> the kobold army with the friggin' elven dragon riders show up, and it's just a mud bath pit wrestle between Hexta and Calixtus. They just Everyone's turn scared. around. The best defense ever. Oh, that's funny. I go um, there. It's a silly place. <laughs> uh, Steve, during the tour, uh, I, Calixtus wants to find out if there's like a linchpin sort of holding this whole thing together. If he can find that out during a tour. What do you, what but, do you mean by linchpin holding the thing together? Be more specific. Uh, like, what is it that, besides, like, the need for survival, like, what is keeping this place afloat from Esca. utter collapse and okay. anarchy? Uh, make me, um, say, insight check. Okay. And, and if I, you know, I'm something. This is something I'm keeping an eye out, basically. Right. So. Oh, dang! Yeah. So <clears throat> it's a yeah. combination of things. The primary one is definitely survival. Like that's the. This is definitely that, and the other one is fear. Okay. Like this place is just a pressure cooker. Everybody, everybody's scared. Uh, it is definitely, yeah survival and and fear and you can't tell part of it's fear of you know 
the whole darkness thing, that's certainly a big part of it. A lot of it is Heska. People are scared of this dude. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. Yep. Give that another But you have line. to romance him. <laughs> right. <laughs> only way ding, ding! Him. Two Give fighters! <laughs> Both alike in dignity and fair fort vengeance. <laughs> we play our scene. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, continue. I'm just keeping yeah. thoughts, mental thoughts. So, I mean, yeah, so Tom walks you around the rest of the the rest of market. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, there's a, uh, the only real temple in town, there's a, there's a small temple to Tamora in, uh, North Market. In East Market, there's a larger temple to uh, the dwarven deity Clangadin Silverbeard, who's like the dwarven god of war. Um, outside of that, there's not really uh, not really a lot. It's just a lot of scared people and a lot of grumpy goblins. When we pass by the shrine to Tamora, I'm gonna toss. I'm writing it down off my thing here. I'm gonna toss seven gold and seven silver into the the donation bin. Okay. They don't need that money. Uh, Eris. Eris, giving money is never about people needing the money. It's a power symbol. It's about status. It's showing that you don't need that money as much as they do. Yeah, but it feels like you undermine your whole power thing when you're doing it in a subservient manner to, like, a god, you know? Like... On the off chance that a god of luck happens to be watching, making an offering seems a wise decision. We might need some luck before the end of the next, you know, getting out of this hellhole. I never rely on luck. I make my own luck. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that is an adorable belief. Calixtus, you, uh, as you guys are walking out, you see uh, a bunch of goblins uh, steal all the money out of the the offering bowl. Yeah, that's fine. Of course it's fine, because it's not about who gets the money, it's about the fact that you are you don't need it as much as them. <laughs> uh towards the end of what serves as a day, uh you guys find out that like the duty roster <clears throat> like everybody's on the duty roster you find out throughout the day. And it's not just the Croche fields, duty. there's other yeah duty. There's uh lots of other like chores you know to do around the city um but you know everything's organized by bells uh that are rung out from the fortress uh and you see people like when they're when their shift is called they stop whatever they're doing drinking eating talking whatever and they just are like they wave they're like all right gotta go bye <clears throat> uh and uh yeah, towards, uh, like, after one of the bells, uh, Tom leads you to a place in uh, West Market, which is the smallest of the, the smallest but best fortified of the, uh, of the market districts, probably because it's facing, you know, towards the enemy it was this fortress was built to defend against, which was uh, your guy's barony. <clears throat> and he leads you to, uh, like a, he basically leads you to a small house. He's like, all right, there you go. This is yours to sleep in. Great. Uh, listen, Tom. Tom, you've been incredibly helpful today. Uh, this is for your troubles. No, honestly, you have, and this is for your troubles. And I give him one gold piece. Uh, and um, tell me. Uh, do you have plans for us that are going to come into play soon? We really are here to see what you need from us that we can supply you from our city. So we'd love to have another meeting with Heska if it's possible. But do you know like what what you guys are doing with us? Because it sort of seems like we've been jerked around all day. No but offense, of course. It's interesting you asked that, and I'm glad you did. But I have a question for you. There's uh -huh. five of you, aren't there? And he holds up a coin. Yeah, five 
You know? Good job, Tom. I'm going to hand up <laughs> something better than a coin. <laughs> something better than a coin. Yeah. A day's rations of real food. I know what they're eating. <laughs> He's like, all right, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> he tucks the coin uh, down his trousers and he sticks the food under his arm. He actually like wraps it. He takes his hood off and you wish he hadn't because uh, he's got some sort of horrible skin condition up there. And he wraps the food in his hood. He says, well, you want to talk to Heskis? No problem. I can arrange that. Everybody knows Tom. Uh, I'll talk to you guys in the... Morning. I... Uh... I, I take a sheaf of paper out of my back pocket and I use magical tinkering on it to make the image of when Jorug bit into the croche the first time and his facial expression, and I give that to Tom. Just, you know, something for you to enjoy temporarily. Wow. You seem like a sadist. Thanks. There's a gold piece in it, too. You're fine. Oh, there we go. Uh, right. Oh, and uh, Harris uh, will pass up a gold piece, and then while he's trying to put it away, we'll use her mage hand to sneak it back. All right, roll. Uh... God, I can't remember the skills in this. Sleight of hand. Yeah, sleight of hand. That's the skill, right? Yep. It is. Yeah. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, you very yeah, invisible mage hand. Yoink. Just yoink that right back. Nice. Okay. Okay. So, Let me get some sleep, I guess. Yeah, Tom says he'll see you in two bells. You're not really exactly sure how long that is. So, um, but yeah, you. Uh, the door does not have a lock. Uh, which way does it open, in or out? It opens in. Okay, that's fine. And uh. It smells like some things died in here at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, in one of the rooms, like there's like a, it's it's not a big place. It's like a one bedroom sort of house with like a living room and a small kitchen attached. And uh, yeah, the living room, there looks like a blood stain on the wall. The whole place kind of smells mildewy. Uh, there's definitely uh, the nest of some sort of creature in one of the corners of the kitchen. <clears throat> but it's not occupied, so that's nice. It looks like somebody cleaned up. It's okay. not much, but it's not much. Perfect. So we party. Having a party. I'm going to set up Is my there... little uh, sleeping bag or whatever in front of the door. Okay. Oh. I was I like was just gonna station myself and go inactive in front of the door too, so we can just be next to each other. I was also gonna stay outside of the house. So Oh, you'll be outside the house. That's a bold okay. And the rest oh, of the I will be inside the house. So the door, the door comes in. So Yeah, but that's why I was like, yeah. boom. Yep. Jorg and Griffin were thinking the same thing. Yeah, well that's because we're best buds. That's right. Yeah. Go snuggle by the door, you two. Have fun. <laughs> Cuddle mode activated. <laughs> Do. Um, Sorry, Jorg. I said that louder than I anticipated. <laughs> so Saved you a piece is... of the ganache. <laughs> what is our goal here? I was wondering, honestly, the same thing. Um, huh? What do you mean? What's our? Sorry, I'm not. I'm out of character. Here, here's a. Here, here's kind of what I'm worried about. I'm worried that. These guys all might come for um, uh, Blackstone shit. Where are we from? <laughs> Not Nightstone. Blackburn? Blackburn, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. Have we done... Have we done... What do we need to do to ensure that they don't come there after us? Kill them all! You could let the kobolds take care of them. Really we yeah, definitely so, could. What's the more formidable army? Is it some goblins and a and a weird and a weird orc, or is it a bunch of kobolds and a dragon? Well, since they are deathly afraid of these kobolds, I imagine it's not. <laughs> oh, well, do we? I think we should be destroying the kobolds first. Do and we, we actually want? 
We don't have to worry about the goblins. And if we ain't, then we know we can take them. Right, and and if we prove ourselves that we are the reason that we destroy these kobolds and, God forbid, this dragon, then maybe they won't feel that they have a chance against our measly town. Right, if it's out of fear, or if it's out of mutual respect, These don't either way is good for us. They will not respect anything but fear and might. You realize that now, yes? But either way, I think we need to be helping them versus the kobolds. Because even if they lose against the kobolds, we'll get away. And that means the kobolds are much weaker. Could they be coming for us next, you know? Wise, yes. I think if the thing that we need to do is make them fear us, and we just need to... Like, the five of us isn't going to strike fear into anyone unless we come from a huge fucking settlement. Or perhaps we kill a dragon. Or we kill a dragon. Fuck, I hate that. (laughs) Steve just almost lost his whole beer. Yeah, it's just water. (laughs) It's just water. But I just saw the top. It looked like a like the top of a beer bottle. I wish. Or this knight gentleman, they seem to be so afraid of. Yeah, if we bring them his head, they're gonna fear the shit out of us. We thought of the possibility of just providing them with enough alcohol that they're too drunk to do anything. How much alcohol do you have on you right now, (laughs) Aaron? I'm honestly curious. You'll never know. You'll never know. Bottles. Bottles. (laughs) Got some here. Got some here. Got some... Oh, that one didn't stay there anymore. Um, but you know I got some I mean I'm not against that plan if you want to be if you want to hit up that plan go for it I'm interested to see what kinds of murderous plans you all have too so (laughs) you know if you want to do the work go for it Yes, so I think if we took the head of this knight and perhaps dragon back to Sir Hester, or just Heska, Heska, they would both be gracious of our saving and fearful of our abilities. We want to get a in a battle with this nitwit guy. Yes, and perhaps if... at that point the kobolds would scatter for lack of liter. So now that we know about this guy, Heska didn't hear us learn about this guy, right? Should we should Blackburn have had an incident with the same people, and then we can be a united front against him? Uh, I'm not following. I'm just saying a common enemy is often a thing that forges a strong alliance more than anything else. So should we fabricate a story about how this dragon-riding Sir What's-His-Nuts the Elf came and took a good part of our squadron out? I think you already fabricated the story. I think the whole saviors thing does the trick. We'll just stick to that one. Yes, I don't know if a uh, fabricated story will serve our needs. Oh, Here's the problem. All right, well, I'm going to keep Here's the problem with saying that we've already been defeated. It makes us look weaker by comparison. That's fair. That's also, okay. not to overstate the obvious, but the 200 year old elven sentinel dragon rider may be not the best enemy to select amongst our available options. So we kill Heska instead. Preferable. Aligned with the kobolds. Seduce Heska. Wasn't that the other option? I think you seem to hit it off a lot, didn't you, Calixtus? <laughs> you know, you two seem to click. Elixus. I just. Elix this. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Calixtus. What light is breaking through that yonder window? Do you see that? <laughs> anyway? <laughs> 
I just understand him. Or her? You don't know. Um, he respects might, and it's easy to understand. Well, it seems that all we gotta do is win them a win them a war. It is if we want to align with these goblin dwarven people. Or not about aligning, it's it's about who's the bigger threat. Right. Or it's more to offer. Here. Which based on their food source, they don't have a lot to offer. We wait to see what happens and then align with the winner. <laughs> the rest will be destroyed. That's, That's real a... evil. <laughs> That's uh, boring too. I hate waiting. Waiting does kind of suck. Sure, exactly. That's the problem with that option. We have been known a, a, a cobalt army to be trying to align with anybody. Wait till they destroy each other and then take out both leaders. Then we solve two problems. Beatbox mode activate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I do think there's a wisdom to Calixtus's plan. Where do we want to position ourselves for all of this? Because I think. Heska is probably going to want to send us somewhere front line ish since we are expendable. Could he send his front line enough that we could uh, slip over to the other side? <laughs> <laughs> that might be a possibility. I suspect he won't send us alone. <laughs> well, sure. But I mean. If we're taking prisoner of war. I don't feel like being a kobold prisoner today either. I don't hmm. think they would let us keep our lantern. I think what needs to be said here is this. My desire is to save Blackburn. It's where I was raised and born. Where I'm from. I know a few of you don't really care about the city, you just happened to get lost there when the darkness fell. But I've got to do what's best for Blackburn. And what... I don't believe trying to align myself with a cobalt army and a dragon with an evil elf on top. Well, one... Best we... for what Blackburn is. I don't think we can safely say that it's an evil elf. We know that it's the guardian of Whitecliff. Could be a perfectly neutral elf. Well, Just... we do we do know that they're they're trying to get more land for themselves. But we'd be next on the list. We don't really know why they're attacking Fort Vigilance. We've literally heard one side of this story, Jorak. Well, it's fine if we want to be go talking to the to the prince elf, then that's fine. But personally, I need to be protecting Blackburn. Well, the, there is this answer as well. Um, maybe the best thing for Blackburn is for us to, as you have been saying, let them do their shit and uh, get the hell out of here. Yeah. If they if they kill each other and we don't have to be involved. I just think that... Wait, what did you say, Chris? Why are we here in the first place? Because <sighs> we didn't know it was here. That's why we're here. <laughs> yes, well, we know what was here now. We don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Mr. Horse. Yep, yep, yep. But I don't think they'll be letting us leave. At least mm. not right now. Possibly in the chaos of a battle. I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine letting the battle play out. No, sir, I don't like it. Well, I think we should be. I think we should be watching it, see what's happening. Make sure both sides are weakened. You know, if they're both threats to Blackburn. I just have a feeling that Heska is not going to let us stand idly by and just watch. No, sir, I don't like it. He made that plain. Mm -hmm. 
the saviors of Fort Vigilance obviously are going to have a role to play. Well, so we either sounds like we've got to kill ourselves the dragon. That. Fuck, I hate that. All right. How, how hard can a dragon be to kill? I believe Exceedingly. Oh, sorry. Were you looking for a non realistic answer? Did you want something hopeful like, yes, it's easy to kill a flying creature large enough to carry an elf that can breathe some sort of destructive force and never come down in range of your axe? Or you use them all, don't you? Yeah. You know, yeah. for something made of cogs and mechanisms, you've got sarcasm. It's spot on. Thank you. Uh, do we know what type of dragon it might be? I don't know shit. I'm, I'm going to be honest, guys. I think that anything else we can learn, we're going to learn it tomorrow morning. That seems pretty likely. So we do ourselves a long rest? We'll do it anyway. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to use the long rest to switch off the homunculus and switch on the alchemy jug. Okay. Because uh, four gallons of beer, baby. I don't know. Uh, I really... of mayonnaise. <laughs> or, or a whole... Actually, that's a very good point. That is a fuck ton of mayonnaise. Mm. Oh. Yeah, you I know. Eris, people Eris won't like it, but so two gallons mayonnaise. of mayonnaise is a lot of fucking mayonnaise. Hey, did you want some oil and vinegar to go with your... Did you want some basic poison to go with your crush? No. <laughs> Guys, they'll love us. Um, I'm going to trance for four hours, and then spend the rest of the time that everyone else is asleep uh, training with my two swords to see if I can get the knack of having both of them down. I'll help him train since I also have a four hour down period for my rest. Okay. Well, uh, shortly after the second bell chimes, uh, Griffin, you're standing out in front of the door, right? Um. Yeah. Sure. I thought that's what I thought. Were you standing? Oh, I was. Out? Get, the door it opens in, so I was just gonna put my back against the door oh, okay. for my four hour rest. All right. Never mind. So. Anyway, so yeah, you hear uh, you know, knock, 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 knock. Open the door. Right, you open the door, you look down. Yep. See Tom. He's got his hood back on. Uh, he's got a, oh. one of his eyes is swollen shut. <clears throat> he's just standing I mean... there looking at you. Hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, what can we do for you? It's not what you could do for me. I'm your guide. Ask not what your guide can do for you. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, what can you do for us there, Tom? Yeah, hey, what's on the itinerary today? Yeah, where, where are you showing us? I showed you the whole downtown. What do you want? Well, if you're here to be yeah, our guide, an... you came to us. Give you yeah. an entire night to think about what our day's festivities were going to be. Come on, man. You don't have anything planned? What, you think I don't have other other things going on in my life? You think that I mean, everything I do like... is centered around the saviors of Fort Vigilance? No. You guys are a bunch of tosses. Did have to you get the black eye. alchemy jug with booze? Because invite them in. We'll have a party. <laughs> Let's get it started. I haven't decided yet. We can have a mayonnaise party. <laughs> That's another Calixtus Hexta thing. Party. That's, thing. <laughs> That's a, a Cal Hextus thing. That's oh. their couple name. That's gross. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man, this is bringing the nightmares of Sarah Paul back. Anyway. Um, sorry, Stephen. <laughs> All right. So. Um, Yep, have not produced any liquid from the alchemy jug as of yet. Not time for drinking yet, Eris. We'll wait and see what the day holds. Man. 
Plus, it would probably be in bad spirits to break out the alcohol Spirit. the first time and not include Hexta in that. Anyway. Yeah, so Tom's pretty much, he just pretty much says, is like, look, I, do you want to see anything or not? You tell sure, me. Sure, show us something. It's like, oh. So he shows you guys the walls. You guys walk along the walls of, the outer walls, not the inner walls. He shows you, uh, they're all very well made. They're well stocked. Uh, the He points out that, basically, that West Market has the, the best defended walls. Uh, or not the best defended, but the, the the most heavily fortified due to the fact that the fortress was built to fight enemies coming from the northwest. So, built a wall, <clears throat> the best wall. No one's got a better wall. And then uh, he says that South South Market is a bit of a problem uh, because of the Croche fields. They're not really the good the good thing is that there it's going to be difficult for the kobolds to burn anything down. The bad news is that it's going to be really easy for them to ruin a crop. But he says that they're already working around the clock to harvest as much as they can because Kroche saves really well because it's a great, great, great crop. It's just super great. He's very excited about it. He is not. He hates it. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, you guys, as you walk the east... Uh, the East Market is currently the most heavily reinforced by the forces because that's where the armies are coming from. And yeah, you guys don't really see anything super new on this day. Uh, you do notice, like midway through the day, though, that he has not made any mention of Hesco whatsoever. Yeah, not surprising. Uh... <clears throat> I ask Tom uh, what color the dragon is. And if he doesn't, would somebody know? He goes, oh, I haven't seen it. Who has? And maybe we can ask them. I know a guy who says he's seen it. Now, whether or not he has is not Tom's, you know, responsibility. But he says he has. Mm -hmm. Ah, come on. So, Tom leads you to a place in East Market, leads you down an alley that's just, you know, littered with trash, smells awful. At the end of the alley is a hobgoblin dice game. Ooh. Uh, they're, they're playing dice made out of teeth. Probably best not to ask where they got them. Uh, but yeah, they're all gathered around a little metal bowl and they're throwing dice in and screaming at each other in goblin you, you see as you're walking up you see a hobgoblin stab one of the other hobgoblins and they yell at each other a bit and then they just get back to playing dice uh tom comes up screams to them in goblin they all see him and they all make rude gestures to him once again the weird like amused respect uh and he's he says blah, blah 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 he says something and one of the guys the guy holding the dice kind of rolls his eyes and rolls them and one of the other hobgoblins stands up and walks over he says well yes i have seen the dragon <laughs> you have of course yes of course could you describe it it was quite large bronzish in color if i remember uh, spat lightning. Uh, quite a vulgar creature. I did not care for it. Hmm. And this knight was riding on its back at the time, or no? Yes. Sir, Sir Nitor, yes, was riding on the dragon's back. It's Nitor! No, it is not. Yes, it is. No, it is not. <laughs> Where did you see the dragon? Oh, it was a uh, a little uh, some time before the darkness fell. I was part of a scouting party. We were deciding if we were going to invade the city of Whitecliff. Theoretically, you understand, if we were to theoretically assault the good people of Whitecliff, which 
gate would be the first to fall and how many slaves could we pull out of it uh, purely as a theoretical exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, when the dragon flew overhead and me and my comrades decided that perhaps it was best to find slaves elsewhere, theoretically. Mm -hmm. Very good. And now we have no need for slaves because we're all living in sanctimonious harmonity. 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 It's a, it's a fancy word. Well, it's a very, very fancy word. Yes. Would you care to join in a dice game, a game of chance? Oh, I, I have a question dice. for you. Uh, are you literate? Am I? Do you, are, are you? Do you mean to ask? Am I a man of letters? <laughs> I do indeed. Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. No. Letters are a disease that carry an infection that lodges itself in your brain. See, me and Aris feel the same way. Uh, I'd love to have more discussion on this because uh, I think that the other three of the, those around us could learn that for sure. But um, Griffin's already sitting learn... playing dice. <laughs> <laughs> how do you learn big uh, four-syllable words like that if you can't read them some way? You just make them up. Don't you get it? <laughs> uh, can I roll an insight on him? Sure. See if he's fibbing. Oh. Ooh. No, you, you're pretty sure he was definitely scouting out Whitecliff to see if he could stop a few slaves. But, <clears throat> and also he probably did see the dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll stand back if everyone's going to partake in dice. Some dice. Clicky clacks. Clicky clacks. Time to throw some math teeth. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can never say no to a game. All right, everybody roll a d6. Can I use my mage hand invisibly to roll that over? <laughs> yeah, roll it again. Go ahead. No, like, okay, I guess I should yeah, probably... Yeah, that's what it is, rolling it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Look at you right, show off. Everybody wins that much silver. Yeah. And uh, huh. I need everybody to roll me uh, another d6. That's how many hit points you lose. <laughs> I want to see the attack roll. <laughs> it's not so much an attack roll, it's just uh, numbers, you know? It's just... It's, it's a long afternoon, there's a lot of scrapes. All right, that's fair. Okay. So everybody leaves the alley uh, a little richer and a little bloodier than when they went in. Well, I'm glad you all had your fun. <laughs> Should Tom. we find out what Heska has planned for us? I was going to ask, Tom, do you think that you could get us a meeting with Marta? Oh, yeah, Marta, right. So, Sarith, I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm a fucking goblin. <laughs> Marta doesn't talk to the goblins. Oh, what's this? I thought it was all living in harmony. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> 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 last thing you said to us last night was everybody knows Tom yeah everybody does know Tom and Marta knows Tom and Marta decides she's not talking to Tom who sorry who's Marta she's, she's the Castellan or former Castellan one or the other of those yeah she's the one who was in charge of Fort Vigilance before the darkness and is now co Ownership, maybe? Well, perhaps uh, she will listen when you ask her, when you tell her that we are asking to speak to her. <sighs> Fine. I'll ask, but only because actually. you guys gave me some of those little fruity, hard things. Delicious. Love those. 
We didn't get. Hey, hey, hey! Shh, we didn't give you shit. <laughs> well, that's not right. Give me time. Right, right. All right. So Tom skips off. And a couple hours later, he shows back up. He finds you guys wherever you are in the city. You're not hard to find. And he's like, have another black guy. <laughs> he's got a broken nose. <laughs> he's Tom, like, what are you doing? I'm finding you. What do you mean? What am I doing? Who's beating you up? Everybody got it. Okay. Like, I can't tell if you are just, like, super privileged or really fucking stupid. Like, the lot of yous. What do you think is going on here? Like, like both, believe it or not. Like, like in general. Like, let's, let's take a moment to zoom out, you know, like, as um, the dragon sees. And you see a city that's about to explode. And like a dystopian it, nightmare. <laughs> right, and that's the best thing about the world right now. So it really does put Blackburn in perspective. Oh, how was a Blackburn once? The place is a shithole. Smells but like it has the light. It smells like dead fish. All right. Doesn't smell like crotch. Yeah, well. Doesn't smell like crush. Nowhere's perfect. Anyway, Dwarf says she'll talk to you. Wonderful. Alright. <clears throat> so he leads you to the fortress. You guys are let in. Blah, 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 blah. You go to a small office where, uh, yeah, Marta Blackstone is sitting at a desk. Looks like she's writing out memos. She's got a team of servants ready to rush out the door at her command. Carrying missives off to anywhere in the city. And she sees you guys and she says, Oh, uh, I, I heard that you wanted to speak with me. I was wondering, I think we have a number of questions for you, but do you have a no more nuanced understanding of what this uh, certain Nitor's deal is? I know he's the guardian of White Cliff, but uh, beyond that, from what is he doing with a bunch of kobolds? She uh, kind of looks at you guys and gives you kind of a long look. And she's like, shut the door. Tom, get out. Yeah. Tom's like, well, I can't hear. She's like, no, you're going to listen at the door anyway, but get out. <laughs> it's like, fine. Tom can tell when Tom's not wanted. I'm just like, I literally told, told you that. Yeah. And he cl close the he cl pulls the door closed behind him. Uh, Sarah, you're like ninety percent certain he he squeaked one out before he closes the door. <laughs> <clears throat> so Marta stands up and she says, "Okay, so good, what a guy." What I'm gonna I would appreciate if what I tell you doesn't leave this room. Um, mm -hmm. we believe our scouts have reported that the reason Sir Nitor is leading kobolds out of Whitecliff is because there are no more people in Whitecliff that they are all kobolds. As in, the kobolds ate all the people, or the kobolds the people had turned into kobolds. We don't know. Very well. But I don't think that if kobolds had eaten everybody, that the good Sir Nitor would be leading them. I understand that the darkness does strange things to people. So nothing can be, no thought can be discarded, but I fear the worst. I certainly don't believe nobody marches an army 
with good intentions. It seems that perhaps this Sir Nitor has maybe changed his oath after all. May I be blunt with you for a moment? Please. Has Heska offered you a deal yet? No. no. Are you intending to take him, take a deal from him? Not particularly. I haven't I'm decided. To take him. <laughs> Heska is a B. But we had no idea what we were walking into. Well, just keep in mind that while Heska is undoubtedly responsible for a great deal of our success, he is also a, an evil son of a bitch, and he will betray you. He will betray me. It is only a matter of time. I'm not blind to the realities of the situation. You're losing hold of your power here. I Soon, am aware. The goblins will get hungrier for other things besides mushrooms. And slowly but surely, your people will die. And then he pulls out popcorn. <laughs> Well, if you... Um, what do you anticipate that he'll be offering us? I don't know. But Heska tends to get what Heska wants, one way or the other. And if he doesn't have leverage over you yet, he'll find some. And where leverage fails... Well, might makes right. Yes. Anyway, unless you find people had any more questions for me, I'm a very busy woman. Yes, Mamata. We will leave you then. I walk out the door. <laughs> I slam into Tom. <laughs> Let's go talk to Heske, yeah? Uh, Tom looks at you, he's like, Heske doesn't want to talk to you. And he points to his black eye. <clears throat> talk to us yet. Yeah, fine, whatever. Yet. I'm not a diviner. I don't read the tea leaves or the entrails or whatever. I tried that once. Did not work. Bonus, though, I did get a good breakfast. Hey, well, Tom, should we just uh, get out of here? It seems like we're kind of in your hair. You're not in my hair. I don't have any hair. Tom, is there a good place to go get a drink around here? No. This la ask this lady, she Drinks, knows. If that's what we're looking <laughs> yeah. for. We can just go enjoy some beverages back at that house. I'm up for that. She's a smart lady, this dwarf. Come on, right, so maybe we'd be heading, maybe we'd be heading, be heading back can. to the Blackburn. Right? Um, can you... Dropped out. Yeah, I think he's uh also I think you keep uh freezing. Yeah. Oh, there, there he goes. goes. Up. Rip in peace, Austin. Rip in peace. Rip in peace. Uh. And he's back. Is he? He might be. Is he? Okay.
Well, go back to our accommodations. Okay. Can so you guys hear me? There yes. Go. Yep. Now. There you go. So, uh, yeah, you guys go back to your your little hovel. With the alchemy jug beer. <laughs> yeah, sure. We can make the alchemy drug beer. Time to, you know, open the keg. Yeah, we'll tap. We'll tap the uh, the alchemy drug keg, and we can share some beer. All right. We Tom. might even share some beer with Tom. Yeah, Tom brought his own cup. And uh, it's like a, it's just like it's like a battered tin thing that's been patched up several times, uh, never washed, <laughs> never washed, but you know, very serviceable. And uh, it does not take a lot to get Tom pretty inebriated. He uh, imagine he's probably a lightweight. Yeah, literally, and yeah, he's not a big dude. Uh, and uh, give me one second. I have to go do a dad thing. I will be right back. Okay. Party on. <laughs> Waiting for Party you. on. <sighs> I'm going to get some water. I need water too, actually. Yeah, I'm going to take a bathroom break. Okay. Now everyone's good. What's the plan, Bobby? <laughs> Is there a plan? I don't know. 
I have ideas, but I also, I think my main idea is not try to fight a bronze dragon. Because literally there's no size of bronze dragon large enough to carry an elf that we can even put a dent in. <laughs> if we're real crafty and we do some crazy shit, maybe, but nope, yeah, it's not even on the radar. Not even close. It's not. It's like you could take our our tomb party, and they could take one, but it would be a a balanced fight. <laughs> it has to be large size. Yep, sure does. Which means it is at youngest young adult. <laughs> so you're sitting at like 200 HP right there. I don't remember what it is exactly, but I know it's somewhere in that ballpark. Because I had to look at the young green dragon or whatever it is that's in uh, Thunder Tree Village in that mod, in the the Lost Mines of Fandelver mod. Yeah. Yep. There's no dragon small enough or large enough to carry a person that we want to be messing with. And Kyle and Austin are not back yet. That means they die first. Ah, so right now the plan is we've got four gallons of beer to get <laughs> to get people tipsy. I probably I think it would be fine to like share that with some of the goblinoid and humanoid n neighbors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In in a show of fostering good spirit toward our group, you don't think so? Yeah, Calixta says no. That's all right. We'll just share it with Tom and figure out why. That's how you cause a riot, Bobby. We can we can sneak out during a riot. Okay. Well, if that's the goal. <laughs> there's always a flex. There's always a way to to bend to get out of a bad situation. Almost. Because, you know, there's some bindings, right? We could probably, I mean, it would be a tall order and would probably be quite dangerous. But under the right circumstances, we could take Heska out. But if we do, we're fucking over this place hard. Because it's going to all the order that he is imposing with his fear crumbles and then all the humanoids get murdered by all the goblinoids. And some goblinoids die yeah. too. So, you know, if there's a way out of it without setting off the, the, the tinder tinder box, that would be good. Is there? There's, if, if there was a way to do it without immediately implicating us, I think that would be great. If there was a way oh. to get... There was do a way you see to the get short Martha, dwarf next to us? Yeah. There's, there's always a way to implicate some shit without it t coming back to us. <laughs> She's a four foot two or a three foot six dwarf. I don't know how tall dwarves are anymore. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, Eris, the interesting thing. <laughs> Eris, here's the interesting thing. I think that this is a case, but if you don't like dwarfs, you can always drink that soup again, and suddenly you're the most successful disguised uh, criminal ever put to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're muted. Can't hear you, Grace. I can't hear you. Might need to have a chat with Bledna. That's <laughs> not a terrible point. I need you, three extra you servings of your soup. That. <laughs> yeah, you saw it as a curse, but it honestly might be a blessing. I'm thinking of it the same way, mainly because I haven't told you all this shit yet, but there are quite a few people who are chasing after me, and a lot of people don't like the type of race that I am, so I might do the same fucking thing. <laughs> Wait, you mean a, a lot of people don't enjoy the fact that you're a dark elf? Alright, uh, I said it already, don't make me compliment your sarcasm again, mate. <laughs> That's terrible. I enjoy that you're a dark as elf. As much as I hate these! I do actually have some benefits of the old heiress being dead, potentially. So... Oh, lost all your so, <laughs> you might need to get yourself a new name, love, is all I'm saying. 
Round Strangers. My name is I don't know. What's a cool name? You invent a name. Steve. Julie. Hey, uh, Steve. <laughs> They'll never figure it out. There are those who call me Tim. <laughs> what now? It's from Monty Python. Oh, right, right. Oh, um, oh no, that sounds like. Okay, well, so, 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 so Kyle. Uh, yeah. Kyle's talking to his girlfriend. He said to start with Adam, he'll be on it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, okay. That, a whole lot of things started making sense. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Um, okay. So, here's my thinking. We kind of. Two birds, one stone. We got reconnaissance on this place and uh, White Cliff. That's wrong. That's what? Right. No, that's right. White Cliff. You got it. And, Holy yeah. Shit, uh, we can go back and report all of this. We can also Get over here. What's, uh, go back what's up on, to wherever okay. What's a Nuts wanted us to check out. There's where the Grand no Duke way. of. I don't know. I spent a lot of time in the Underdark. You care a lot about these places. Uh, great. You watch. We could go to Grey Watch right now. Part of me, this is more a Bobby out of character thing than a Griffin in character thing. Wants to go to Whitecliff with uh, like a I am a resident here, like forged a document to be like I am a resident of Whitecliff, and now there is a humanoid living in Whitecliff. Maybe we can get this guy on our side. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that simple. And yeah, anyway, so. Griffin is cool with basically any plan that gets all of us out of this city alive. Preferably without yeah. Heska being alive still, but also, like, that's tricky. That's tricky. All right, I'm not I'm a big ask... Heska fan in character. I'm going to ask you guys this because Jorig is out of the room at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys a question, mainly because a barbarian is in here right now. Uh, how do you... Oh, he died. Do you guys... <laughs> oh, no. Trust... Kind of do you guys trust anyone in the council? Oh, you mean in Blackburn? Yeah. It depends. Do I what do you mean by anybody? trust? Like... Would you have a drink with, or, like, would you actually do what they say, or do you think no their intentions in are honest? I don't trust I any think... of them. Um, you're in the right here. Here's what you do. Easy. You kill them all, and then you take their hat or whatever, and you put it on. Easy peasy. Like the hat stealing thing. You have to I steal, love a good hat. You have to steal a hat, otherwise it doesn't count. Ask me how I got this hood. Could you kill somebody for it? Hey, you want to see Why the hat that I stole? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the hat that I stole? And I yeah. take out my piece of cloth that when I fold it, it turns into a hat. That's a sharp hat. It's not a bad hat, right? No, it's it's really nice. Anyway, continue. I was interrupting. It's rude. I'm drunk. <laughs> I get it. Tom, how do you want to be the sixth member of the uh, the librarians? <laughs> Gotta be honest, you guys sound like a bunch of fucking nerds. Thank <laughs> you! I know, right? But I'm in. <laughs> Tom's in. Alright, Tom. Hell yeah. We should yeah, make it official. Tom. Let's do shots we should... to make it official. I like that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Auto apologize Tom. in advance if I throw up on anyone's shoes. It's not that I want to. No. I kind of do, but it's that's not the reason I'm doing it. That's good. Tom, I see you brought a cup. Could, could, would you mind going and grabbing five more for the rest of us? You guys don't have cups? I thought you would. No, we just don't. We just have this. No, we just have this jug of liquid. <laughs> All right, Tom, I'll get you cups. Don't you worry. Great, it's Tom, awesome. Tom stumbles out of the house. Great, <laughs> we need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I fully forgot he was here.
bring drunk Tom with us. He's a good guy. <laughs> he's good people. Uh, no, he's loyal. He's too loyal. Yeah. Listen, I love loyalty, but only when it's to us. <laughs> tell loyalty me something, is Steve. Overrated. Yeah. Yeah, tell that to Aldo. Uh, tell me something, Steve. Are we within the walls of the city? Yeah. Uh, but, but uh, you do have a a very skilled rogue with you. Eris has been known to slip in and out of places unbeknownst. She could probably get you guys out if you needed, if out getting was the plan. If we wanted to continue this house party elsewhere, we could sl sneak out pretty stealth. There is a slight hiccup with our escape plan in that regard. What's that? I point to the light on my back. <laughs> well, you can dim that, right? Yeah, but safe passage back. We can dim back. it, but we can never turn it out. Exactly. Yeah. Safe It'll passage back. Won't be a problem. Okay, uh, I know this about kobolds. Uh, they suffer from the same effects from sunlight that I do. Okay. Um, might be something to keep in the old thinkers, for those of you who think. And nerds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we need to decide what we're going to do. If that is turn tail and run, or come up with something that this place will benefit us. Far this place doesn't have much to offer besides a barrier between us and potential kobolds. <sighs> Unless you all have sudden sympathy for this place. As with the fact that they're eating that garbage. Yes, well... Unfortunately, they have chosen the path of more resistance. So what next? Do we drink? Do we vote? Do we do something else? This is the first time and probably the last time I'm ever going to say this. I'm leaving it up to Calixtus. <laughs> okay. Or is this the first time among many well, after you become part of the cult? Nice, Steve. I saw that. <laughs> I got my demons. <laughs> Shit, no! You did that to yourself, man. <laughs> you placed your trust in God's hands. Uh -huh. I just happened to be a god of murder. Clix just wants to stay. Yeah, of course he does, because he wants to see this shit play out. And also, uh, to be totally honest, Griffin wants to stay for similar reasons. Um, I think we have the same reasons why we want to stay. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I don't think we have the same reasons on why we want to stay. No, no. no. Griffin is curious about how it's going to play out. Calixtus is pretty sure how it's going to play out. Calixtus knows exactly how it's going to play out. <laughs> Uh-huh. What'd you say, Grace? It's said... going to be a power vacuum. And Clix just wants to be there. <laughs> I mean, that is his MO. There's going to be a power vacuum in Blackburn? We're getting on that fucking council. There's going to be a power vacuum in Fort Vigilance? We're getting in that fucking power vacuum. Like, it's it's there. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, not some subtle. People, some people slide into your DMs. KZ or Clix just tries to slide into your uh, power vacuum. It's fine. That's right. That's yeah. right. Slide into those PVs. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so we're going to yeah. stay. So we'll wait for Tom to get back with our cups, and we drink some beer, and we uh, we ask Tom, so when's Hexta going to see us? Uh, Tom shows up with uh, a bag full of cups. Mm. There's nice. like 20 cups in there. <laughs> Good man. Only, only five, shit. but okay, we this works. We need more people to drink then. Now nah, we're Take getting the fucking shit outside and now. start playing for more people to come. 
Oh, yeah, we go into the center of town, and I say, listen, a lot of us don't speak goblin, but she speaks the, uh, what is it, the universal language? Hit it! <laughs> yeah, dance! <laughs> Except it is slightly less elegant than it used to be, and because... Because <laughs> you're a dwarf Because <laughs> we're trying all the satyr moves... Uh, that involve gallopy sorts of things, but with my non gallopy legs, it's just kind of glumpy. Right. You ever seen a dwarf river dance? It is not pretty. <laughs> but it's still dancing, and it's still playing the dulcimer, and there's still music. And okay. Well, and the idea that drunkenness is involved in this message. All right. Uh, roll a performance. All right. Let's see it. How good is this weird dwarfin dance? Not working? No. I can roll it for you if you need. Go ahead and roll it for me. I have no idea why it's not going, but... No yeah, problem. Watch in, like, a minute. It's going to go 15 times. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Performance. Oh. <laughs> yep. Not as good as you yeah. used to be. Not as, not as graceful as yeah, your standard. Not as graceful as you were used to. But you do dance. And, uh... Some of the... More than anybody else has seen in this place for a long time. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, Even bad dancing. All the dwarves look embarrassed, all the humans look confused, all the goblins look disgusted. But, but there's uh, booze. But there is booze, and everybody grabs a cup. And you, it takes very little time to drain that sucker dry. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to call it there. Cool. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I, I need to stop talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Take care of your voice, man. Um, And then we will... Uh, I'll say everybody levels up to four. Okay. Everybody levels up. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, everybody gets level four. Uh, clocks. Uh, we're going to move. That one up one, and then does anybody want to use anything, any inspiration to move things along? I'll pop the bloodstone spell all the way to the end. Okay, and I've got an idea for that. I'll cool. shoot you a message uh, a little bit later. All right. Uh, any questions or comments before we end? Uh, that was good. No, that was fun. Yeah. An enjoyable roleplay heavy game was nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, what's coming up next is not that. Is gonna yep. be a lot <laughs> Figured not. And, and actually, I'm glad I have a little bit extra time to prep for it because it's going to be. It's going to be a lot. So. Yeah. Anyway. We roll rolling hit dice, right? Yep. Roll oh, yeah. Dice. Roll hit dice. Uh, I got to roll. Oh. Nice. Damn. Very good. Take it. My so that's still not rolling stuff. Damn. Eleven more. Damn, I have forty five HP now. Like a like boss. Five. Still good. Not bad. Uh Grace, did you want me to roll it for you? Or you can roll it later too. It's not a big deal. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. There go. Five. Okay. Five. So a lot of average rolls. That's um yeah. All right. Very good. And All right. Cool. cool. <clears throat> All right. So I'll give cool. me some things to consider. And all right. And the stream.